Hi guys and welcome back from Carly at the Herbothecary. Uh, really good to see you guys again. If you're new to the channel or like the videos, please show your support by hitting like and subscribe down below. So a quick disclaimer, this video is for entertainment purposes only. I am not a doctor or an ethnobotanist. I own a lot of good guidebooks and have been doing this for a while. So please always do your own thorough research first. Don't pick anything unless you're 100% sure of what it is. Check with a book, check with the internet, check with a, a experienced forager that might know more than you. Always make sure you've got the landowner's permission before you pick anything. Avoid areas of high pollution where they might have used pesticides and pick as high as you can to avoid where animals might have sprayed. Do not pick endangered species. Please always make sure that you only take as much as you need. Leave some for the creepy crawlies and the birds. And it is advisable to leave your foraged finds outside for at least half an hour in a cool place so that any of those creepy crawlies can find in you. And always thoroughly wash your findings before you use them. If you've watched any of my latest videos, you know that I was recently diagnosed with a huge allergy to pollen and a couple of other things, but they, that I'm not worried about. Um, also asthma, and they are currently testing for every single respiratory acronym they can think of. But as that's never going to keep me out of my garden, stop me eating the beautiful natural food that I have in there, smelling the flowers, climbing the trees, and going for a paddle in our local river that is surrounded by flowers, it does mean that I have to put up with constantly streaming eyes and nose and a horrendous cough. So, in one of my last videos, we were turning coltsfoot into a cough remedy. Now, I did prefer mullion, and last year, I did find one in flower. Unfortunately, it was behind the locked gates of a company on the industrial estate that stopped trading after lockdown. Once I finally got hold of them, it had gone to seed, and as I wouldn't be harvesting the leaves anyway, I asked him if I could take the seed head home. I tried to propagate them indoors in January with all my other stuff, but I must have dropped some seeds on the way because the ones indoors didn't start, but I started to notice little baby ones prickling up on the pathway. Then I thought I'd get some gardening work done the other day and tame this unruly fuchsia. And I'm sure you can imagine my excitement when I found growing out of this lump of concrete with a hole in it that my husband dug up from the old clothesline to find this huge plant. I mean, these leaves, these baby ones, they're so silvery or grey green, but these large ones must be at least 40 centimetres long. So I'm going to bring these, well, I say home, to the Herbothecary kitchen. These leaves really are so soft and fluffy. The hairs are everywhere. They're like a lightish green on the top. As you see, those they're everywhere. They're so fluffy, which is probably why it's been used as toilet paper in the past. But it's also been used for millennia as lung medicine. It is known as lung medicine. And it has antiviral, antioxidants, anti-inflammatory properties that really help calm and soothe and fight anything that is making the cough calm. It also, the anti-inflammatory, gets rid of any swelling that's occurred because of the coughing. As I said, this one is from the tip of my finger down to my below my elbow and I know that that's at least 45 centimeters because I use my arm to measure pretty much everything I've got used to it now so I'm just going to give these a good brush off I don't want to wash these I just want to get rid of anything that's still on there as with all my foragers I did leave them outside in a cool place for an hour so any buggies that were on them could find their way home now I don't want any 
blemished bits or bad bits to get into our lung medicine at the end. So if there's any discolored bits or any bug bits, I'm just going to cut those out. I've got a lot of leaves here and they're really large so I can sacrifice those bits there. Oh, we've still got some fuchsia flowers in there. Now you could just use the mullion leaves and make a simple mullion infusion but I'm adding some thyme which is a natural expectorant and an antiseptic and helps expel the mucus. There's an old plant in my garden and I think it's coming to the end of its life. I just want those tips. I'm also going to add some rosemary that I got from my garden which also helps relieve congestion, has antiseptic and antispasmodic properties so that'll help with that urge to cough. Unfortunately I didn't have any fresh or dried out of my garden but I'm also going to add some oregano which cleanses lungs, it's also an expectorant and an anti-inflammatory and also some turmeric which is not only anti-inflammatory it's also immune boosting so it'll help me fight whatever's causing this annoying cough. Now I do normally dry these leaves not only for storage it makes them less absorbent and I just seems to work better but I had about 15 leaves and as they're so big only half fit in my dehydrator and so obviously these ones are fresh now I'm going to double the amount that I'd use because they're fresh so normally I'd use about 15 grams I think I'm going to use around 25 grams in this and I want to increase the surface area so that there is more space for the water to absorb those active ingredients so I'm going to finely chop not tiny chop but just finely chop these and then we are going to I think I'm going to try the oven method of dehydrating these just a little bit to make them less absorbent but they're just finely chopped so I'm going to pop them in the oven on low lowest it'll go with the door open just to remove some of the moisture while I prepare the rest of my herbs now it took about an hour in my dehydrator but we're finally ready and I have my freshly washed jar and my fresh herbs ready. Now I do want to weigh out how much of the mullion I have. As I said for about five doses that I'm making this jar takes just over a hundred milli well about a litre and a quarter so I am just going to weigh out what I have in mullion as I said I do want over 20 grams if I don't quite get 25 then 20 should do me just fine I did come up a little short so I decided to use the rest of those stalks and we had around 24 26 so I'm just going to add that fresh rosemary and the fresh thyme and some of the oregano. I'm not going to add the turmeric at this point as the water will be boiling and I find that that seems to mess with the, the turmeric. I mean I don't know I know that when you cook it it's supposed to be more active but I never like putting it in when it's boiling myself. Then fill our jar with boiling water, give it a good stir in to make sure all the plant matter is submerged and then I'm going to pop a lid on. Unfortunately this lid has lost its connectors and its rubber bit so I am going to pop some cling film over the top just to make sure that there is no evaporation as we don't want any of those active properties evaporating out of our medicine. I'm then just going to pop it aside and let it steep for a minimum of four hours. So it's been four hours and believe it or not the fluid is still quite warm but I would like it actually to be warm as although I didn't want it to be boiling when I added the turmeric a little bit of heat is fine so I'm adding a about a tablespoon to this mixture. Now you can omit this one if you don't like the taste of turmeric although it is so good for you and I quite like it so I don't see why not. I'm going to give that a good stir in and make sure it's all amassed before grabbing my sieve and cheesecloth. 
You can use any non-highly absorbent material for this, cotton. Unfortunately, all of my actual cheesecloths are being used. And if you've seen any of my other videos, you know that my go-to are these gauze because I know they've come from a sealed packet. And because they're used for dressings, they are as clean as can be. And I'm going to pull my plant matter through that. Now, I do want to get all those leaves in there because, like I said earlier, the mullion is very absorbent. So I am going to grab that cheesecloth, or in this case, the gauze sheets, and I am going to squeeze out every last drop of that beautiful lung medicine. It is important to strain it through a cheesecloth or a cloth as you want to catch all those hairs as they can cause esophageal discomfort. And all that's left to do is to grab my clean bottles and pour them in. Now I'm going to be making two bottles, one to have at work and one to have at home as I spend, it feels like equal time there but I will be there for the lunchtime dosage and I am going to be taking 200 mils of this two to three times a day. Now it is important to make it refresh after two days as there aren't any real preservatives in there. And as always, don't forget to sign, date, refrigerate. I also add the dosage to this. I will make a proper label later, but I didn't have the labels with me, so I just wrote it on, which is just as good. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Give us a like and a thumbs up. If you want, comment down below. Tell us your views on Mullion and if you found that this remedy has helped you in the past. We have an exciting announcement here at the Hypothecary on August 24th, which is not only my 40th birthday, it's also my wedding anniversary. After many requests, we will finally be releasing the first Herbothecary ebook. We'll have two. The first one is Raiding Nature's Medicine Chest, eight recipes, plant based recipes that every medicine chest should have. This includes a bites and stings balm, a eczema cream, a yarrow styptic powder that I never leave home without. The second will be Raiding Nature's Pantry, which will contain my nettle stew recipe, our wild leaf uh, pesto, our forage stir fry, and another five on top of that. These books can be pre-ordered by emailing us at herbothecreenaturalhealth at gmail.com or if you'd like to, you can visit us at our Facebook page, which is Nat Natural Health at Home at the Herbothecary. I will pop those details down in the description box below. They will be available at £1.49 per book or £2.49 for both. Thank you guys again so much for your support. I've really enjoyed sharing my knowledge with you and I can't wait to get the book out. Again, thank you guys for coming back to the Herbothecary. It was great to see you again. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe and hopefully I'll see you guys again soon. Bye.